Good afternoon. This is Wayne Bilal. Very late. I apologize. I had a car problem and I didn't get here on time. Um, sorry about that. We're supposed to go on at 3 and I'm a good 45 minutes late and I'm not sure what the hell's playing in the background. There we go. I really do need to <laughs> not rush into things without setting it up. Um, today we're going to talk about cash is king. What do I mean by that? Look, I've done financial statements and I can make profits. I can see profits on financial statements and um, without a problem. And the business can be still out of business because they ran out of cash. It happens, all right? They have their cash in receivables. They have it in inventory. Yeah, they have it everywhere except in their bank account, all right? When we're in the position we're in right now, cash is king. You need to stay on top of it. You need to know what's going on. You need to grow it. All right. Now, I'm going to go from my book a little bit, The 90 Day Profit Reset. I apologize. I should grab one that's not the proof one, but this is the one I play around with. And I, I spend three, there's really three things I concentrate on. There's a little bit more than that, but the three main chapters are in the subtitle, you know, the 90 day profit reset, gain your independence from reduced cash flow, shrinking margins in the, in an evaporating customer base. All right. Um, the reinvigorating cash flow, what I'm after as much as anything is finding the cash that's hiding in your business, especially in tough times. All right. Now I'm going to go through the normal things I want to tell you to do. Then when at the very end, I'm going to talk about what you should do if you need it now. You know, everything's great, but I need it yesterday. I got payroll coming up tomorrow and I don't have anything to be able to do. Or, you know, my vendors are beating me up and the phone's ringing. I don't know what to do with this. The property tax people are after me. Sales tax people are doing audits. You name it, it can go wrong. All right. And then I got to do all the work because, you know, my, my employees don't want to come to work because they're afraid of COVID or something. And we're having a spike again. So especially in El Paso. All right. First and foremost, sell. All right. Look at your customers and see what they're not buying from you that you sell. I do this every year. All right. I sit down and I list my major business clients. I actually list all my business clients down one side of a spreadsheet. I don't use a spreadsheet anymore. I use Smartsheet because it's just a, it's a tricked out spreadsheet. So if you've never heard of it, check it out, Smartsheet. And across the top, I have the different products that I want to sell. Not all, everything I offer, the ones that are profitable, the ones I want to sell. And I look and see, you know, this person, they bought tax planning and they bought the finance, but, you know, they, they bought, I do the tax return, I do this, I do that, but I don't do coaching or something like that, or I don't do tax planning. And I put them down on a list and start making a call at the appropriate time, but the next time I see them, I bring it up. So I plan. All right. Now you're in a little bit of a hurry for cash flow, so you might want to uh, do the 80-20 rule. I mean, look at your best clients and see what uh, what they should, what you can do to help solve one of their problems, and put it in front of them. All right. Uh, don't assume don't assume they know what you're doing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but don't assume that they know what you're doing. Okay. Um, raise prices. Believe it or not, and I'm, I would go into it in the book. I'm not going to spend a lot of time right here. We'll talk about it in a future week. But don't be afraid to raise prices. It's actually an excellent way to bring in money, all right? Um, another another thing, speed up collections. As simple as that. That's usually the number one place cash is, in, is hiding is in your receivables. So get on the phone. Make it a habit of go, calling everybody every week. If you're seriously struggling, offer a discount for payment. You know, just say, hey, you know, we're struggling, we're still closed, or things haven't come back, and I don't really want to get a loan, so, you know, I'd rather work with you. Um, you know, you're going to buy this, this, and that. You know, you owe me this much. Um, can you pay me? I need to get paid. If they say no, offer a discount. I, I, I only do that if I need to, but if you need to, you need to. Okay? Um, look at your inventory. It's simple as this. You shouldn't be, you know, your inventory hides a lot of dollars. So if you're selling a product, really look at your inventory and look at reducing it. All right? Look, you're better off selling your inventory now at a 10% discount than six months from now at, a, at real price. You're better off selling it now at 25% off than a year from now. You're better off selling it at cost than having it sit on your shelf and never sell. All right? Take that cash that you saved from selling that stuff, do one of two things. Put some of it in the bank. Other part, buy products that are selling. I mean, I'm always asked, what should I hold? What should I carry? Carry what sells, duh. What's your customers tell you? 
Go look at drop shipping so you don't have to have inventory. See if you can work with your suppliers where, hey, I'll order it today, you'll have it by, you know, three or four days. Look, people are used to buying online now, so they're used to waiting. I mean, but one of the advantages you have as a brick and mortar store is they're not waiting. So if you are, try to have the things that you're obviously looking for. Obviously, there's a, a, a definite relation between expenses and cash, all right? Um, but a 10% across the board cut on everything probably won't work. So you need to look at all your expenses line by line. And the first thing you should be looking for is what can I eliminate? All right, definitely look at things. Look at your bank statement and see things that are hitting your bank every month that you might have forgotten about and, and get rid of them, all right? Um, if you haven't reviewed your contracts for insurance and phone service or things like that that you pay every month, do so. Um, ask customers to supply their own raw material. You know, make that part of your contract. Explore just-in-time inventory processes, okay? So you just bring it in. Uh, another thing, floor plan your inventory, which is basically financing your inventory, all right? Um, your suppliers, too, have a stake. So look at, have, see if they can extend your time frame on what you need to pay. If you have a credit card, you should build up your credit card. Use it to pay your vendor. Wait 30, 45, 60 days, pay your vendor, pay off your credit card within 30 days. Now you've extended it from 30 days. Let's say you get the vendor to go from 30 to 60 and then you use a credit card for, and pay it off before you have any interest charge. So you've gone from 30 to 90. That'll make a huge difference in your cash flow for most people. Um, another thing, can I live without this right now? Stop buying things you shouldn't buy. All right, cut expenses. Most important thing, understand why cutting expenses is so important. If I'm only making 10% margin, that means for every dollar I sell, I get to keep a dime. All right. Well, it works in reverse. Every dime I spend in cost and expenses is equivalent to a, ten, a dollar sales. We can make that $10 sales. If I only get to keep a dollar, every dollar I cut saves me $10. Same math. All right. Um, do this. Do this kind of an audit at least annually. Probably should do it more often. All right. Um, look and see if you can focus better and get rid of some of your high expenses. I did this. I've told you before. Uh, some of you are new and haven't heard me. Um, I've looked at at, at um, my bookkeeping section. You know, I had half my staff was there, eliminated it entirely, and basically outsourced it to people that are doing a better job. And believe it or not, my income went down the first year, my profit went up. We're not here to make sales, we're here to make a profit. And truthfully, the second year was even higher because I was able to focus on my more profitable items, all right? So don't be afraid to cut. Don't be afraid to question things, all right? Um, I already talked about that. It, make, sure it's, make sure you collect, make sure you just collect inventory. We talked about that. Raising prices, don't be afraid to raise prices. I'm gonna, I don't, I want to cover that more maybe next week because that's kind of important. Um, when you're looking at, a, at the, where to cut costs, concentrate on the big items first. All right, so the two biggest items for everybody, payroll is one of them, and if you sell a product, that's your second biggest. So, if I can increase gross profits and look at ways to cut my product cost, all right, and my labor cost. That's huge. I mean, if I can do that by five or ten percent. Now, on the back of the book, I have appendixes in here, and fifty-five ways. Appendix number six, an execution plan, fifty-five ways to increase profit margins. The book is, I think, it's up to three ninety-nine or two ninety-nine for Kindle, and nineteen ninety-five for the paperback. But these darn uh, appendix are well worth it. I mean, honestly, I, I've charged thousands for the stuff that's in there. Um, Look at employees. Look at, first of all, whether you need the job. All right? Simple as that. Now, I, I told, promised you at the beginning that I would t talk and touch a little bit on, like, man, I'm in trouble. I, I really I really need to, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm literally going to be out of cash. You know, I'm either, I can't make payroll tomorrow or next week and my vendors are beating me down. I'm getting calls from the credit card companies. Uh, my landlord, I'm behind on rent. They're about to lock me out and throw, that, throw out the key. The banker's calling me. They're going to call a note. I'm in deep trouble. 
All right, you're in what I call survival mode. At that point, you simple as that. All the general rules and the normal ways of operating go out the door. You need to, when you're in survival mode, you need to understand you're in survival mode and do whatever it takes to keep the ship afloat. And that means you may have to cut back people. You, you, you may have to tell some of your less important vendors that you know, you're going to have to wait. Um, but here's some other things you can do. First of all, you're going to have to cut your pay. I mean, if you can talk to people and say, look, I'm not even paying myself anymore, I cut that first, um, that's important. Or live off your savings if you can. Um, you know, collect receivables. I hate to say it again, but that's the first place to go. I can't tell you how many business owners I've sat with that are having cash flow problems are sitting on a quarter million, half a million dollars worth of receivables that's 60 to 90 days old. Get out there. Get in their face. Give them a discount. If worse comes to worse, consider consider selling the invoices. You can factor them. I hate doing that, but that might be a way to go. Um, create a payment plan if you have to. Get something. All right. Lend your money. Lend your business money. Um, you know, from your personal assets or credit cards. Don't be afraid of that. Eighty-five to ninety percent of businesses, especially small businesses, use their credit cards. Okay. Um, like I said, go to your vendors, ask for an extension. That works dramatically. If you're not in serious trouble and, you're and even when your cash is starting to go down, your financials might look really, really good. Go to the bank, try to arrange a line of credit, explain what's going on. There's a lot of money out there right now and banks are more agreeable, but you gotta have a profitable business. And if you had one before, they were banking on the idea, okay, let's say betting on the idea that you're gonna be profitable again. Another thing to do is look at it and borrow money from family. I mean, they know you and they, they understand that this is an oddball time. You can do that. That might cause a problem. Put up equity. Get with a bank. Get with a good lawyer. Treat it like a real loan. Don't, don't get crazy. Uh, bring in an equity partner. All right? Um, you know, maybe, you know, either they bring, you know, you're doing lending, borrowing money at a pretty good rate or uh, giving them a piece of the action. So... Again, I, I hate to tell you that, but again, I, you know, yeah, I'm locking the book a little bit, but that's because I'm proud of it. There's a lot of great information in it. And at the very back of it on Appendix 2, I don't know, I always have trouble getting it in there. There we go. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but I'll read it to you. It's 82 tricks to find and keep the cash in your business. So I covered a lot of it, but there is even more here. All right. So this, that by itself, if you can find five, six, ten things that you can work on, you can find the cash that's hiding in your business. I do it all the time with my clients. I know you can do it with yourself. Hey, until next time, this is Wayne Bilal. Again, I apologize for being late. Um, definitely didn't mean to. So next time I'll be early. I don't know. We'll see. Hey, until next time, this is Wayne Bilal saying let's make this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.